Pierce joins us now from London. He's an analyst of EU law. Uh, Steve Pierce, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Let's start off by just talking about what uh, refugees have to do to prove that they qualify for asylum uh, in the EU. Well, what they have to do is they have to show either that they're being persecuted on certain grounds like race, religion or politics, or they have to show that they're fleeing uh, a war situation in which civilians are being targeted. And Syrians, for instance, fall into both categories roughly equally. Uh, sometimes people from Iraq and Eritrea, for instance, are, are in those categories too. But then some people from other countries find it harder to, to qualify when they apply. And that process of them uh, trying to prove that is just done by, by what, them telling their story, by them showing where they're from? I mean, how, are, how is this being uh, regulated by, by the border guards that they come across as they enter Europe? Well, the idea is that they first tell a kind of short version of their story to border guards, and then there are trained national officials who hold an interview and look at all the evidence they have from let's say their own government and uh, the uh, UN about conditions in the country of origin. And if they don't believe that they come from that country or that they've suffered those experiences, then they can ask more questions and test their linguistic ability or the details of their story to see if they, they really believe what they uh, have said or not. But to a certain extent, it's, it's based on whether you believe the person in front of you. Now, Steve Pierce, as we're seeing more restrictions being put in place by countries across Europe uh, and calls to return some uh, economic migrants or even asylum-seeking refugees back to their countries of origin, what's the process for actually doing that? Uh, as you've seen the scenes of Idomeni, how are you meant to return people who have nothing back to somewhere where they, they came from nothing? Well, you can either try and send them back to the country they came from, which is a, a prohibited if, if it's a dangerous country for them, or you can try and send them to a country that they came through, which is a, to some extent what the EU is now trying to do on a big scale with Turkey. And you need that country to agree to take them back. You need to prove that they've come from that country. And you also need to have gone through that process of considering and rejecting uh, a claim for asylum in the first place before you then go through the process of sending them. And that normally takes a few weeks or months. And they might try and fast track it with Turkey, but normally it, it is uh, quite a long procedure. And, and what actually happens in that process? Uh, do the country that they're in, do they put on a plane? Are they, are they sent back uh, by train? I mean, like, just talk us through some of the logistics, if you can, of how you return people to, to those countries. Well, sometimes it is a plane. I mean, the EU um, border agency called Frontex some, has uh, leases planes that sometimes stop in several countries to pick up uh, people on the way, like a charter flight, although only, it's obviously not, the, uh, not a flight you want to be on, I suppose, if you're the, the person being returned. And sometimes it's via land. There are coaches. And I suppose from Greece to Turkey, it might be via land. It might, uh, might very well be via a flight or even a, a ferry that's uh, chartered for these purposes to take people back to the Turkish mainland. Well, uh, Steve Pierce, we have to leave it there. But thank you very much for joining us. Very interesting stuff. Thank you.